know you hate it when people assume that you're mixed just because you look a certain way. I know I do. For the past years, the look of Havisha women has evolved so much that it's caused me to think if there's an ideal look. So today I'm going to be exploring the different beauty standards in the Havisha community in So I first got started as an eyelash technician when I moved to China and lived there for a year. Mm -hmm. um, I came about learning eyelash extensions by chance really when I was invited to a training course. So I did that, really, really liked it, picked it up really quickly, um, but then I kind of forgot about it, came back, did my master's in marketing, um, so got to know how to you know, run a business. Um, and then I just had to decide really when I graduated whether I wanted to work in a job, do the nine to five, or if I wanted to set off and do my own thing. Now, in terms of Habisha women, you're obviously Habisha. Yeah. So do you feel like Habisha women are represented well in the media, or do you feel like there's like one stereotypical slash ideal look that's only shown to non-Habisha people? Yeah. So what's your take on that? Um, I mean, very recently, it's funny you say that, because just recently I've been following um, a few Habisha women pages on yeah. Instagram, which I've just seen kind of pop up more and more. Um, a lot of them are like the modern Habisha or the new Habisha look. Um, and I was just thinking about this the other day, like, is it because up to now Habisha women have been portrayed in a certain light? And maybe yes, to a certain extent. So, for example, when I see Habisha women with loads of makeup and the whole highlight and contour and eyeshadow I'm just like wow like this is different because of course up to now you're only kind of seeing a woman with not much makeup at all um and a beautiful Zodia and stuff but you know it's I, I guess it's, it's it's the age as well isn't it it's it's now the younger women we're obviously into our makeup and it's only now that we're being portrayed with you know, with a more of a glamorous look, I think. Mm. I think up to now I've only seen very, very, I wouldn't say plain Janes, but women with not much makeup at all. And now you're seeing that whole highlighter and, you know, bold lipsticks and, you know, so that's that's nice for me. It's like, it's a change, mm -hmm. which is good. And it's, it's more of a, um, what's the word? It's more of a real representation, I think. Mm -hmm. And do you feel like there's an ideal look? There's like, yeah, that's what... Uh, a train or an Ethiopian girl's meant to look like or do you feel like oh there's loads of us like we're we're very diverse like one day you'll see Absolutely. a girl with curly hair straight hair braids whatever like what do you feel like do you feel like there's one type of look only or no I think obviously the way we've been represented up to now yes that one kind of like I say plain toned down look has been played up mm -hmm. but is that true no absolutely not I don't think there's an ideal look at all I think we're all very diverse we're all very different um, I'm told all the time I don't look Eritrean. I'm just like, how is an Eritrean meant to look? Exactly. Um, <laughs> you know, sometimes I wear my hair straight, sometimes it's curly, sometimes it's in braids. It's, it's whatever I feel. So, no, I definitely don't think there's an ideal look. I don't think any Habisha woman should feel the need to, to look a certain way. We're all different. Mm -hmm. We come in very diverse skin tones and sizes and shapes. So, no, I think it's whatever we, we feel to look like for that day. Makeup is a factor hugely associated with any type of beauty standard. I caught up with makeup artist Mezi and she gave me her take on her perception on the use of makeup. Makeup is a very good thing. It's 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 a very good
when not not come and get that for all the girls just to fix a little bit of stuff that you got in your face or you know just to glam up really mm -hmm. it shouldn't be something to really change you to to look like somebody else mm -hmm. um, Misty Nats really feature you know enhance the girl that's what absolutely, you meant absolutely exactly. definitely yeah so it shouldn't be too exaggerated at the scam and like you just like mm -hmm. that's a really um, so this is a makeup artist of do you feel like that um you know Habisha women like in general they influence the mainstream beauty way the main the mainstream influences like I don't know some people like to say that for instance like in Eritrea or Ethiopia they love watching Bollywood movies Absolutely, and yeah. they like look at the Asian girls and they think oh my god like oh like do you feel like we influence or do you feel like we need to set our own trend well we are the, looking at it we are really influenced by the media mm -hmm. badly but it's not just uh, the asian way it's just nowadays everybody's wearing it Habisha women are known for having luscious and long hair and hair is also a huge factor that Habisha women associate heavily with beauty so now that you've done the big shot or started your natural hair journey, do you feel less or more beautiful? Because obviously hair is a huge factor mm -hmm. associated within the Habisha beauty. Yeah. Um, I would say I feel more beautiful. Before I, um, before I did the big chop, well, the reason why I did it was because I relaxed my hair, right? And okay. um, the reason why I relaxed it was because of the beauty standards within the Habisha community, mm -hmm. such as having just straight hair. You know, I hated my hair frizzing, so... I relaxed it and for a while I felt good but when my hair started breaking falling apart and um, I couldn't have my hair curly I couldn't have versatile hairstyles mm. um, then I started to feel out of place and not myself so now that I have my hair back it's fully grown I feel I feel beautiful now I feel amazing I feel so much more confident than I did after I relaxed my hair yeah. and um, do you feel like social media has changed your perception of the standards of beauty within the Habisha community? Definitely. Well, definitely. Like, social media, um, people now have uploaded pictures of all different types of hairstyle, you know, um, textures, especially, like, from even 2A, like, type 2 um, wavy hair to 4C texture hair. And I just feel like social media has made it so much easier for other girls who might have felt out of place mm -hmm. thinking that you know the curlier that your hair is the softer it is um your hair is better than others so i feel like it has allowed me to embrace my 3c type hair um yeah like what hair type is mine i don't know um, that it's kind of I stuff feel it. do feel you mind it. go ahead so you always have to ask like you can't just be like because oh. i'm online um, looking at people using 4b 3c for wear and i'm like what is my hair type why do i feel like it's between 3A to 3B. Is that bad or good? That was not bad, it's just your... It's just the actual yeah, part. it's just like, your I hair. Like, it was like a... Nothing's bad. I thought it was like yeah. a good and bad range. I just thought, oh, what no. is mine bad? Like. And <laughs> that's the thought, that's the ideal that we need to get out. Mm -hmm. We need to like com completely exterminate from the community. There's no bad hair, good hair. There's you know? hair. It's just hair <laughs> and it's just how you take care of your hair. Yeah. You take care of your hair and it's not breaking and it's not dull, dry. Then your hair's good you know mm. but if your hair's fallen out like mine was when i relaxed it mm -hmm. you have bad hair honey and you need to do get something those yeah. scissors. <laughs> you get those scissors and you need to chop 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 have you ever felt like you need to conform like have you ever been in a position where you're like oh my god like i'm surrounded by like all of these ever training Ethiopian girls and they all look a certain <laughs> way and i don't look like that i want to like you know wear this much makeup wear this much extensions put on these crazy heels have you ever felt like have you ever felt like you want to be in that position or have you felt you know what happy the way i am they're beautiful like tell me um i have never been completely happy with myself and i think that's just because of society and its standards of you know the ideal woman and what she should look like you know so if we want to talk about um hair or if we want to just narrow it down to the Habish community, mm -hmm. I've always felt like there is a particular look. And I, if we want to talk about hair, I feel like straight hair is, um, is favoured. It's highly favoured over curly hair. And I feel like a lot of, especially the older generation, they will straighten their hair. They will keep it straight. Like, 
I hadn't seen my mum's natural hair for years, mm. for years, and um, um, yeah, and just by being in the household with my mum straightening her hair, and so are my sisters, and then I've got my aunties who introduced me to relaxers, um, yeah, man, I felt like I should have my hair straight. I, you know, I straightened it one time, and the compliments that I got from people, it really pushed me to want to keep my hair straight. Hence the reason why I relaxed it, because mm. I'll straighten my hair, go to a rave or whatever, and next thing you know, like, you got the roots frizzing, this bit straight, it just didn't look pretty. So I put the relax in my hair, and um, because of the, the ideal standards of beauty and, yeah. Mm. And what would you want to say to, like, you know, young Habesha females that feel like they're, you know they're obligated to look a certain way, whether it be with, you know, colorism, mm. hair, you know, physique, all of that, all of these factors, you know, they are like big things that, you know, yeah, contribute to beauty. What would you say to people that, or females that may be in that position? I would say you are unique. We are all unique. You look one way, I look another way. Mm -hmm. um, we have to embrace how we look as an individual. Be the best version of yourself. Yeah. And by that I mean like work on your health, work on work on yourself, but don't be too hard on yourself. Mm. Don't, we spend too much time looking at what the media tells us is beautiful and we try to conform to that because we think that's what's beautiful, but we don't realize that individually we all have our own beauty. You know, we are all a different standard of beauty because we're all unique and different. Mm. So my message to them would be, um, learn to love yourself. You have to learn to love yourself because if you don't, I'm telling you, you will do things like, for instance, I relaxed my hair because I didn't love my own hair enough. Mm -hmm. And it crushed me afterwards. I felt like, oh, I just didn't feel like myself. I feel like I really changed myself so that I could look a certain way so I could be accepted by the people. Um, but then I also had people that loved my curly hair. Mm -hmm. You see, like, it's, it's hard, but... Um, I just wanted something different on top of that too, but um, but it makes you feel good in the inside that your hair is actually healthy. That's I feel the best so feeling. good now, and um, you know I've got so many videos of like I would snap every day and show mm. people me oiling my hair, massaging it, and showing all my products and everything, everything that I'm using, and um, literally I can see the the growth, yeah, the changes. Um, it was hard. I'm not gonna lie to you, like. Even going out with the girls and I went clubbing one time and literally I had people thinking that I was gay and they actually came up to me and I think it's even really if first I was got your hair in it. Yeah, yeah. Even if I was, like why would you why are we having this conversation? Just because I've got uh, short hair, no makeup, I've been denied entry into clubs and I'm definitely sure no. it's because <laughs> I had short hair and I probably look like an auntie to them, you know, like, no, we're not letting this chick in, she just doesn't look the way we want her to look and Things like that really hurt me. Like, it still hurts, but, um, yeah, you just have to learn to love yourself. In some cases, the standards of beauty for Habisha women can change based on their environment. Habisha <laughs> Straight no, straight no, car, car le no. Makeup so full way araga lenji try araga. Toro hono si kayar al si sarra makeup si darag more beauty ona. While Habisha beauty is constantly evolving and globalizing, some people in the community seem to feel like stepping out of your comfort zone and trying new things is a taboo and isn't accepted within the culture. Judging from the new generation of today, it's seen as diversifying or trying new things rather than creating a look that all Habisha girls should conform to. 